Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and today we're going to do a two-part video here on the Ruger Precision Rimfire. Uh, a little over a year ago, Ruger came out with the Ruger Precision Rimfire in 22 long rifle. Uh, just a couple months ago, I think back in December of 2018, they come out with the Ruger Precision Rimfire in Magnum calibers, both the 17 HMR and the 22 Magnum. This we got in the box today is a 22 Magnum Ruger Precision Rimfire, and today's build is going to be assembling this with a uh, UTG Recon Flex bipod. This is made to go on M lock uh, front handguards. It mounts directly to the handguard in the M lock slots without having to have any kind of adapter to uh, put it on there. We're going to top it off with a Nikon rifle scope. This is a uh, Buckmasters 2, 3 to 9 by 40. Um, not a real long range gun or scope, but this is not a real long range gun, but it is a precision gun. So uh, this should be plenty for 50 to 100 yards, no problem. Uh, we're going to mount it with some Leopold rings. Now Nikon recommends that you use steel rings on their scopes. But this being a 22 Magnum, the recoil is fairly light. I would suggest if you were going to put this on anything bigger, say a 308 or a 65 Creedmoor or something like that, you definitely want to use some good quality steel rings. And I was able to pick up a Ruger BX-15 magazine uh, that's made to hold 22 Magnum or 17 HMRs. Uh, this is a 15 round magazine here. The rifle that I bought came with a 9 round magazine, still the rotary type magazine just like you would have at the 1022, but this is a little bit bigger for the Magnum cartridges. Let's get this box opened up and see what's inside it. Just a cardboard box, you can see right in here. Everything has a cut out in the foam there where everything sits so it doesn't move around when shipping it. Um, your bolt is in here in its own little spot. We'll take everything out of here, get it set up on the table. There's the uh, nine round rotary magazine, real similar to the Ruger 1022s, but like I said, this is a 22 Magnum, so it uh, has, uh, you know, it's a little bit bigger components in it. There's your lock that comes with it. Uh, the rifle's in this little cutout area there. And we're going to set that down here and underneath the foam packing is going to be your paperwork for it. You've got your instruction manual, you've got a Ruger sticker, an offer for some uh, different accessories, uh, join the NRA, another little offer if you own a couple other guns. Uh, the paperwork may change a little bit depending on where you live and what laws are uh, uh, in your state. But anyways, we're going to get this thing set up with all the goodies. All right, just to make this thing a little easier to show on camera, I think the first thing we're going to put on there is we're going to put the UTG Recon Flex bipod on there that'll uh, make it a little easier to show the rifle, set it up, and uh, point out some of the features of it. Now, one of the things you'll want to figure out on these is do you want this lever to the front or to the back? Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can put them on either side. It's just uh, once you get them on there, you'll figure out where you want it. Do You can extend these. They uh, go from six to nine inches on there, and all you got to do is just make sure that screw's a little bit loose and pull it out. This little catch right here, latch catches in here in the different adjustment spots. You can fine tune it a little bit if you want, uh, if you need to, and I'll show you why that's going to be an issue. All you got to do is tighten that screw down and it'll stay locked in place. To put it back in though, you have to depress that and then push it back in, which can be kind of a pain sometimes. I've got some that are spring loaded to either eject or retract depending on uh, you know what type it is, what model and everything. But we're going to go ahead and get these mounted on here, then we'll figure out where we really wanted that lever at. That little T-nut right there will rotate once you get it in inside the, the M-lock groove on the handguard. Snug them up. Figure out where you want to put it on there. You got a 15 inch handguard on there. I skipped one hole in the front there and come back to the second, third hole, but you could mount them all the way to the back if you wanted. You can mount them all the way to the front if you wanted. I'm just going to pick it right there and see if I like that spot, and then uh, we'll move on from there. All right, and there we go. We've got our UTG uh, Recon Flex bipod mounted on the handguard on the front there. Now, I said I would show you one of the issues with this, and uh, I'll have to get one of my other rifles out so we can compare it. Okay, here's the issue with it. This is one of the ARs I've got where I've got, this is also a UTG uh, bipod on the front of it. Now, this one will pivot a little bit or twist, rotate side to side a little bit, and it also pivots side to side. So if you're on uneven surface, 
and you need to rock it just a little bit to get your reticle lined up with whatever it is with the horizon, get it nice and level and everything, it's pretty easy to do it with this one. The problem with this one is you're not going to rotate it without lifting one foot off the ground or the other. Uh, you can fine tune it a little bit, you can adjust it, you can do the course adjustment where the notches are and rock it one side to the other, or you can, uh, you know, just put it in between notches and tighten the little screw down and that'll also keep it where it needs to be. But uh, you got a nice positive lock in there, but like I said, you're not going to have the ease of rotating it a little bit to uh, level up your reticles is not going to be as easy on this as it would be with something like this. Now the reason I went with these though instead of the other type is because on the bottom of this one I had to add a piece of a Picatinny rail underneath there and then this mounts directly to a Picatinny rail with a quick release lever on it but I just didn't want that on here because it starts adding a lot of bulk to the bottom of it and this is pretty light it weighs about 10 ounces I think altogether. So, I mean, that's really light on the front of this gun, and being a lightweight gun, that's kind of way well, I wanted to keep it. Lightweight, uh, easy to carry around with you, and um, nice, clean look on the front of it. Also, with this one, I mounted a varmint light on there, so um, I, uh, you know, can take it out and do a little coyote hunt with it. All right, now that we got the bipod mounted on this thing, it's going to make it a little easier to perch it up here on the table and show you some of the other features with it. We'll go ahead and show you some of the... Uh, adjustments on the back of this gun. Now you pull this up. Now I, I'm not a real big fan of this and I've got a really big head so I'm probably going to have the uh, cheek riser all the way down. I don't like both of them being on the same screw. It'd be nice to be able to adjust them independently, I think anyways. But once you get it where you want it, up and down, go ahead and lock it down and uh, you can leave it right there. Um, I mean, it's, it's my rifle, so I'll adjust it where I want it and probably pretty much leave it right there. If you need to tighten it up a little bit more, there is a screw right here on the other side and that on there, you can uh, you know, tighten that up a little bit more so that when you throw the lever down, it uh, grips it pretty tight. Also on the back of this, nice rubberized pad on there, there's two 5 seconds Allen screws on there. You can go ahead and break those loose a little bit. You don't have to take them all the way out. But then you've got some adjustment up and down on your butt, butt pad right there. Uh, you may need it, you may not. I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there in the factory position and snug them back up. All right, my initial thoughts of the rifle is it feels really well made. It's a good sturdy rifle. Uh, the one piece of uh, glass reinforced stock on it and the full float uh, 15 inch handguard on the front of it with the uh, the uh, M-Lock grooves, and I like M-Lock a whole lot better than I do Key Mod. Um, it's nice vented and everything. Uh, it's, it's a good, feels like a good quality firearm. It also has a threaded barrel on it. It's a uh, half 28 threads on the front of it. Comes with a barrel protector on the end of it. You can put a suppressor on there or, uh, you know, any kind of muzzle devices you want to put on the front of it. As long as it's legal, you're, you know, allowed to have them. Go ahead and go for it. Um, it's got the little quarter throw or a 45 degree throw safety on it. Nice oversized uh, bolt knob on it. Short throw or long throw, depends on how you want it. Um, and as far as the bipod I put on the front, like I said, that's what I was looking for. Um, I may switch it out if I can find one that pivots that mounts directly to M-Lock. I might do it um, without having to add a bunch of adapters to get to that point. But um, right now we're going to go ahead and throw the uh, scope on this. Now the rail on the top of this, if you get the 22 long rifle, it's going to have a 30 MOA cant to the, uh, the Picatinny rail on the top because those rounds tend to lob a little bit. They're not as flat shooting as the Magnums and especially not as flat shooting as the 17 HMRs. Um, when you get to the, the larger full-size Ruger Precision Rifles, they have about a 20 MOA cant on those and uh, that allows you to shoot a whole lot farther. They're a lot flatter shooting than the 22, but with 6.5 Creedmoor and 308, you're gonna be shooting out to a whole lot longer distances. This one is kind of the, uh, the long range precision rifle for people who don't have long range to shoot at. Uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, long distance ranges in the United States. Some states, there's one near me that's, uh, they've got a little over a mile distance that you can shoot at. But you're going to find on your average outdoor range, you're going to find 100 yards, 200, maybe 300 yards. There's not a whole lot that go much farther than that. And if there is, there's going to be special days or um, special requirements for you to be able to shoot on one. If you want to do some uh, long range sniper type shooting, this is a really good choice if you've got limited space. Still gives you that same feel, it's the same feel of the rifle and everything. 
but in a lot shorter distance. Let's go ahead and get the scope mounted on this thing. All right, I've got a set of Leupold one inch uh, high rings. They're aluminum, uh, just single screws on them. And I've got the uh, Nikon Buckmaster 2, three to nine by 40. Uh, this has the BDC reticle in it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna allow you to uh, make your adjustments without having to, you know, twist your turrets. Now, one of the cool things about this is if you go on the uh, Nikon website, they have a calculator on there, and I'll put a link in the description for that too, but you can uh, match this scope to virtually any cartridge out there. Uh, I'm gonna be shooting some Hornady factory rounds in here, 30 grain ballistic tip ammo, and um, I will go on there and it'll give me the calculations for where each one of those dots are on that BDC reticle and tell me if I center it at whatever distance I choose, my first ring will be this many yards, second one this many, and so forth. But uh, let's get it mounted up on there. Now somebody out there is gonna tell me how I'm doing this completely wrong, I'm sure. There is a lot of ways to mount scopes. If you want a good, precise fit, you can actually hone the, uh, the mounts themselves. You have to put everything together. There's a hone that goes up in there. It's just a round rod that's uh, calibrated pretty much. It's a nice straight rod, no taper to it or anything. You put a little grinding compound on there pretty much and you'll work that hone back and forth in there and you'll be able to see wear spots in there where you've been eating away at some of the finish to make sure that those are really trued up. That way it doesn't put any kind of twist or bind or anything on your scope. We're gonna get this thing kind of eyeballed in there and take it from there. Now another thing they say about this scope, it has a generous eye relief. I'm not sure what generous means, but I've held it up a few times and kind of looked through it just to see if I even liked it before I even bought it. And it really does have a pretty good eye relief on it. Uh, it's about three to four inches, somewhere around there. And with this being a rim fire, I'm not too worried about the recoil coming back and smacking me in the pirate eye. But um, let's go ahead and get it kind of adjusted, eyeballed and everything in there, and then we'll go from there. All right, once you've got everything kind of snug down where you think you want it, go ahead and shoulder the rifle. Get comfortable with it. Get your cheek right on the riser where you think you want it. Make sure that everything is nice and comfortable on there and go ahead and make sure you've got a good sight picture. That'll allow you to set your uh, relief on there. You wanna make sure you don't see that kind of a dark ring around the outside. You wanna see a nice crisp image all the way around the inside of it. You wanna be able to see the reticle nice and clear and you don't want it to be too close. Otherwise, you'll see that dark ring close up. If you're too far back, you won't be able to see all the way around the edge of the inside of your, uh, your image there. So get it where it's comfortable. And if you got it right there where you want it, go ahead and adjust your cheek riser, your length of pull and everything to make it comfortable. And then uh, go ahead and snug everything down just a little bit tighter so it doesn't move around on you. And then you can take it out and sight it in. All right, got everything snugged up on there. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the Ruger Precision Rimfire. This one's in 22 Magnum. Uh, this is the part one, the indoor part of it, where we set everything up. And uh, next time we're gonna take it out on the range, get it sighted in, get everything fine-tuned on it, and then have a little fun with it, see how it actually shoots. It's a good-looking rifle, feels really great. Uh, got it uh, set up in kind of a budget uh, sniper, long-range type rifle. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button up here and check out some of my other videos. And stay tuned for the outdoor part of this review.